This video is for students who want to learn the bass um, and get decent with using it, but they have another main instrument and they probably won't take very many one-on-one -on -one bass lessons with me or another bass teacher. Um, and so I just wanted to go over a couple things to think about and to keep in mind while you are learning this instrument. Uh, so first and foremost, uh, make sure that you have your own instrument. You can get relatively cheap basses for like a hundred bucks, um, and some of them aren't uh, too bad. They might not sound amazing, but the sound isn't necessarily as important as like a proper setup. So, so this bass, if you look, the strings are pretty low towards the fretboard, right? It's not, you're not seeing that, right? Um, if you see an instrument where the strings are a million miles off of the fretboard, then it's not going to be really a valuable purchase for you. Um, oftentimes, I can take them home and fix them up for you and get them into a decent setup for you. Um, but if you kind of want something right off the bat able to work, um, make sure that the bass you purchase has a relatively decent setup. Alright, so moving on from that, uh, what are some things that we need to start thinking about as bass players? So different from a lot of other instruments uh, bass is all about control uh, and so we need to constantly be stopping the other strings from ringing and I always do this little like example thing where I like play a couple notes I've stopped the string I was playing but now you can hear the other strings have begun ringing so Anytime I play a string, I'm also stopping three other strings at the same time. And so we're, we can accomplish that with these four fingers. We can also accomplish it with these four fingers. And so sometimes you'll see like little small movements. You can see little small movements and that's me choosing when to start and stop notes. And that plays into control. So we don't necessarily need to be spending hours and hours working on your ability to control all of your strings. Um, but it's something to keep in the back of your head while you begin practicing. And so there's a couple exercises you can start off with to start practicing your bass that will help you build some of these skills and also become a little more proficient with uh, physically using your instrument. So the first one we're going to look at I call 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and it sounds like what it means. We play each string from 0 through all the frets to 4 then we move on to the next string 0 through all the frets to 4 etc etc and then to make it a little harder, kind of the next step up, after you feel good with going up, then once you finish going up, then you go backwards. So just as a quick kind of little example so you can see what's going on here. And you can see I haven't talked about this hand on purpose because this exercise is for this hand, right? Okay, later we can add stuff about this. So the exercise we start off big string zero, big string one, big string two, big string three, big string four. After we're done, now we move to the next string. Second string zero. One, two, three, four. Next string. Next string. And you can see when I'm playing, I'm not trying to play super fast. I'm looking for precision and that my notes aren't kind of sounding all buzzy and weird. Right, that's a problem. Right, we need it. So, that's your first exercise. You run through all of, all of those strings. Once you feel good about that, you can kind of go up relatively proficiently. You're feeling good about it. It doesn't have to be lightning fast, but it feels good. Then you can start adding and going backwards. And backwards, at least for me, has always been way harder to do. It feels more awkward. You don't feel as strong and um, it's a good thing to start working on. So just to give you an example of the addition of now going backwards. So that is a good exercise to begin practicing. Now continuing on with thinking about this hand and making this hand better, another exercise I like to give people is kind of an exercise that I originally made up to help my guitar solo players 
begin to practice um, the movements required for soloing. But typically these movements are used throughout music. So it's good for us bass players to, to practice them as well. So this one we're gonna move through the strings and we're just gonna play five, six on the big string, five, six on the second string, five, six on the third string, five, six on the fourth string. Then we go backwards, six, five, six, five, six, five, six, five. After we complete that, now we move to five, seven. And you see I change which finger I'm playing with. Do not play this one moving your fingers like this. That defeats the purpose of this. We need to be playing with the respective fingers that belong where they are. So now if you can guess, after going up and then back down with our index finger and our ring finger on the 5-7, then we graduate up to 5-8. And now we are using our pinky. Now this is a gibberish um, exercise. It's like the notes don't make sense with each other. And that's fine. That's not why we made it. We made it to work on this hand. So this would look like this now, just to show you. And then you're done. Okay, now let's go ahead and start talking a little bit about this hand, because this hand is good one to think a little bit about and um, somewhat bass players need to think about it more than other instruments I know that can be maybe a controversial thing to say um, and so I'm gonna move my bass just a little bit so you guys can see this hand and what we're gonna be doing first is kind of learning more of like a classical bass player way of plucking um, if anyone's watched me they know I'm not necessarily a extremely classically um, oriented player and I kind of use whatever it takes to get the job done if that's a thumb or if I'm just using a single finger and playing up and down with it so I do weird things um, but let's go ahead and start off with the kind of that classical bass style so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting our thumb here on the top of the pickup and then we're going to play index finger and the index finger comes down and it makes a pinching movement to the thumb and then the third finger follows that and so when we're first doing this, and we practice this, we, let's not worry about this hand, right? Let's just leave it to do nothing. And so we're just kind of right now, it's just like touching the strings and keeping them from actually playing any notes. But if you wanted to, even easier, you could just let go. But right now I actually kind of have to hold to hold the space in this position that I currently have it in. So we do, after we do that, we move to here and here. And so we played through all the strings. As my fingers jump, you'll notice the thumb is following with my fingers. And this is to keep control, right? Maintain control of how my fingers are operating. Um, you can also work on speed and just practice playing the two fingers back and forth on one string without worrying about that. And then after you feel good about that, then kind of put both the speed and the string changes together because typically that's the most difficult thing for this hand is being fast but then also changing strings. And right, and working on moving through the strings, plucking with two fingers. Um, and I would say that's kind of a good place, a good starting place for any UBA students wanting to get better at your instrument and start practicing at home. Um, now there's much, 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 much more to learn about bass music theory, more uh, techniques, um, more about hand positioning, finger control, muting, ghost notes, just countless numbers of things to talk about. But this is kind of like your, your bass layer, if you will, right? That first kind of just get off the ground and start like understanding how to mechanically operate the instrument, right? And then from there, once you guys are expressing to me that you want to hear more information and gain more new knowledge, like, I've learned everything in this video, I want more, then let me know and I will make another video and we will progress more with the instrument. I'll take 
our next step, right? And that's probably going to be learning note names and learning scales, right? That's kind of the, the usual thing. And scales are very useful because they begin to explain why certain chords are played in certain places and why certain bass licks happen, right? And um, understanding why you do something is extremely important because if you don't learn why, then once I'm not teaching you, you won't know for yourself, right? You have to have me teach you every single time. This is how this song goes. Oh, this is how this song goes. So until next time, have fun playing your bass.